and welcome to Grandad's Reviews. In this second video of looking at the basic settings on the Fuji X cameras when you get your new camera, if you've not been used to mirrorless or you've just been using a mobile phone, we're going to look at the image settings. So whether we're going to shoot in JPEG or RAW and what settings you can change on that. So I'm going to demonstrate on the X-T3 because uh, most of the image settings will be the same no matter which Fuji camera you get. So first off we're all set up as we were before we're in program mode everything's on auto so and all we're going to change now is how we're going to capture the images. So we go into the menu and we go to the IQ setting and where it says image quality we're going to change that from raw to fine and now we get a choice above it of image size so we've got large medium and small and it will also tell you how many frames you can take at those different settings and the actual mega megabits megabytes it's going to be so 26 meg at 3.2 and 7906 images and we can go down to medium small and we can get different crop ratios as well 3 by 2 which is a standard crop on this um, sensor 16 by 9 so if you're putting it on a monitor or something like that or a one-to-one -one crop if you want a square for Instagram you can do it from here so we're going to put it on 3.3 by 2 large and then we've got say image quality so we've got fine normal which is slightly higher compressed JPEG fine and raw so we can take a fine JPEG and a raw file normal raw or just raw now I would recommend when the siren just goes by that you pick fine and raw and I'll give you a reason for that on raw recording it's entirely up to you really uncompressed or lossless compressed there's no difference in quality just the amount of space it takes up on your SD card and your computer um, I'm just leaving it on uncompressed now the next one down is film simulation now this is Fuji's own film simulations that relate to their old film stock that they used to use so we've got Provia, Velvia, Astia, Classic Chrome Proneg High, Proneg Standard, Eterna, Acros, Monochrome and a Sepia on here. Now one thing to be aware these film simulations will only be baked into the JPEG not the RAW. In the RAW it will be put in as metadata so if you're going to actually process your RAWs it'll read that but in the JPEG that's what you'll get so this is why I'm saying pick JPEG and RAW as your image quality because if you take it just in JPEG and say you've picked Velvia and you don't actually like that after you've got the, the image taken you can't change it but with RAW you can change it to any of them so film simulation just pick that for the JPEG you're taking and I say if you don't like it you've got the raw so you can change that white balance will leave it auto no grain effect or anything else so we'll leave all the other settings as they are now on the X-T3 what I would suggest you do is in your save data setting under the spanner you come down to card slot settings still image because we're going to do raw and JPEGs pick RAW and JPEG so your RAWs will go on one card and the JPEGs will go on another card if you've got the XT30 or the one with just one card then they'll all go on to one card so it's, it doesn't matter but if you've got the XT3 or the XT4 then you can do that and basically that will be our, our base settings for taking the shots so now we've got it 
we can take our images. Now I say with the JPEG, you've got what you've got. You can do a little bit of processing, but the RAW, you can process more. And what I suggest, if you're going to start processing, start with the free Fuji software, which is the X RAW Studio, and just use that to get used to it before you move on to anything better. If you want to do any more processing on RAWs, then yes, go for like your Infinity uh, Photo or Luminar or Lightroom or Capture One. And Capture One, I've got a free version for Fuji. You don't get the full set of tools, but it is very good. But what I'm going to do next is just show you how you can process your RAW in Fuji X RAW Studio just to get a basic JPEG out of it. So let's head for the computer. Now, before we use the Fuji XRAW Studio, you need to change one setting in the actual camera. So, going into the menu, go to the spanner, come down to connection settings, and in connection mode, we need to set it to USB RAW conversion slash backup restore. So just make sure that's connected on, because we're going to use the camera's processor to actually uh, render the RAWs out. So we have the camera connected to the computer and then that works through the X RAW Studio software. So now we've got all that set up. You can plug it into the computer. Let's get started. So we've got the setting in connection settings to RAW conversion. We've got the camera connected to PC, USB cable. So what we'll do now is start up Fuji XRAW Studio. So this is the program we've got. Now what you need to do is transfer your images off the camera onto your PC, put them in a folder somewhere, start up this program it's a waiting for camera to connect so we switch the camera on now be aware the program will only process images taken with the camera model that we're taken with so if these RAWs I've got on here were taken with X-T30 and I plug in the X-T3 it won't process them it's got to be the X-T3, X-T3, X-T30, X-T30 so you then navigate to where the images were taken, where you've saved them on your computer, should I say, and they'll load in this bottom bar down here. So you pick the one you want to process. So let's say this one. It'll come up on the main view, and down here it'll tell you everything about that image you took. The size, the camera model, lens, focal length, shutter speed, aperture ISO and on this side here it's a bit bigger are all the things you can change and these are all the things that are in the camera so we've got image size so we can change the image size if we want to we could change it to one by one if we want the quality which will stay on normal we want to increase the exposure so we can just hover over each of the settings and it will do a preview. So if we go one stop over there, when you click on it, it'll knock it in. You've got film simulation. So we could do Provia Standard. See what that looks like. Velvia Vivid. Vivid. Should give it more punch. So we'll, we'll go for that one. We don't want any grain. We don't want any color effect, white balance, I've got highlight tone which is set, uh, color we can boost the color if we want, now sharpness we can boost the sharpness so let's take this, let's leave it on zero, let's just zoom in one to one so we can go one to one so let's up the sharpness to four, make it a bit sharper and we can do noise reduction. So if we get rid of some of this noise here, that's probably a bit too much noise reduction. Go to two. Get a bit. 
and you change the color space put it on srgb if you're going to put it up onto facebook or something and that's our settings that we've done and then all we have to do is hit convert and it'll convert this to a jpeg which is just there now when you've got it changes a jpeg you get an extra option which is rotate and crop not standard so we can rotate it or we can do a crop by dragging by pressing enter you're going to lock in that crop so let's just pick a different so this is another set of images if i pick this one so it's telling us here i had a manual lens on so this is with a manual lens and we've got again all the same things here image size and it was shot with the xt1 and so now you can see that i can't actually alter any of these settings because it was shot with the xt1 let's see which camera this was shot with xt1 again so i can't do that this is the xt3 now we can change all the things so it was using a manual focus lens again We've got the size we can change fine EV dynamic range yeah, film simulation I'm going to Provia classic chrome chrome high chrome standard Turner or we could change it to black and white Is quite good so we go with that one we've got some black and white adjustments we can warm it up a bit let's go warm it all right add some grain now the highlight can knock the highlights down right to two and the shadows now to bring them up Make them darker or we can bring them down and make them lighter so we'll do that obviously could have changed it black and white can do color sharpness I'll knock one out and what ISO did we show oh, 3200 so let's just zoom in one to one and we'll just do a little bit of noise reduction there we go plus one fit and that's the image you want to save hit convert that gives us this jpeg which we can now if we want to crop so i'd like to crop it down just there hit enter we'll save it overwrite that old image and that's our finished image so that's a quick look at fuji x raw studio it's a very basic software but you can use it to change your raws into jpegs using your camera it's free software you don't need a powerful computer to run it because it's running off the the processing done on the camera and you can get some pretty good effects Obviously, if you want to take it further, then you can look at uh, free software. Uh, I've got Darktable, which is very good. And Capture One do a free Fuji only cut down version, which is excellent. There are other free options out there. Uh, just have to Google that, really. And if you want to pay, then obviously we've got Lightroom, we've got Photoshop, Capture One the full program affinity photo you've got luminar there's lots of other ones out there if you want to do it if that's one you, you want to go further with your processing but if you're somewhat quick and simple and it's giving you the same options as in the camera then this is a an ideal ideal way of doing it 
So that's my quick look at uh, basic image settings and processing on the Fuji X cameras. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified, hit that notification bell. Till next time, see you later.